Here we go. Let's tackle this problem. This is a classic vector addition problem, and I see two main methods of solving it, and I want you to see both side by side, so here we go. Reminder, this is what the problem sets up. I have an airplane flying at a speed of 480 miles per hour, and then a wind that's blowing at 50 miles per hour at a slightly different direction. I'm being asked for the combined speed, the, the effective speed, that the plane is making with the wind. You'll notice that this pink line is slightly longer than the original blue line. That means the wind is actually helping out the airplane a little bit. Uh, it's not a huge difference. That's something to notice when we look at the problem. Let's go about method one first. Uh, method one uses vector components to solve the problem. To my mind, it is uh, three primary steps. For step one, I want you to break any and all vectors into their components. What I mean by that is, for instance, start with the plane vector, vector P, like so, and bring it down into your workspace and give me a horizontal component off of this. I'll put some arrows on these, and I want to label them. So first of all, this is a horizontal and a vertical line. Got to be a right triangle. This is the, planes, uh, the plane vector in the x direction component, and this is the plane vector in the y component. The overall plane vector was given to us. And not to mention the angle was given as 50 degrees. So just as a note, um, what we're looking at here is a 50 degree angle here. All right, so with that information, that means that this angle here is 40 degrees. That's the relevant angle I want to work with. It's inside the triangle. I'm going to just get rid of that 50, focus on this 40 degrees. All right, I have a right triangle. I have one angle inside the triangle. I'm going to now uh, be able to pick up a calculator in the next step to calculate these x and y components. Ah, say for one thing, let's figure out what their relationships are to the 40 and the 480. PY is the side opposite of the angle. So sine of 40 is PY over 480. Solving for PY, I'm going to get PY is 480 sine of 40 degrees. Likewise, Px is 480 times the cosine of 40 degrees. Those are the components. I don't need the uh, approximate values right now, so I'm just going to shrink this down and get it out of my way. Let's talk about the wind next. Here's our wind vector. Let's see. Looks like this. Wind. Um, the wind already is a horizontal vector, so I know that it's a 50 degree long vector, it already is horizontal. That means wind in the y direction is zero. Uh, that one made it easy. These two vectors are now broken into components. Step one, complete. Step two, sum up the horizontal and the vertical components. That means Px plus W x and p y plus w y just a reminder that p in the x direction is here 480 cosine 40 and that wind in the x direction is 50 miles per hour and in the y direction. And I got those from here and here. I can now calculate these approximately 417.7 miles per hour in the x direction 
and in the y direction 300 about 309 miles per hour um, Okay, so step two done. We've added up the horizontal and vertical components. Now what we're going to do is reassemble them to find the resultant. P plus W is what the question was asking me for. I need to know both the magnitude and the direction of this vector. All right, magnitude. Magnitude, not too bad. This is a right triangle. You know two of the three sides. Let's see, I do all that. I get about 500, oh. 519 miles per hour. In a math context, I always want to do approximate equal sign. Um, magnitude, okay, now direction. A lot of different ways I can do this. I have three sides of a right triangle. Um, I'm gonna do inverse tangent. Oh, this is unfortunate, it's 36.4. 9 degrees. Um, I think we're going to call that 36 degrees. Now be careful, that is not a bearing. So P plus W is 519 miles per hour at an angle of 90 minus that answer. I get uh, 54 degrees. Method one, vector components. Let's zoom out so you can see the whole thing. The second method of solving this problem is using the law of cosines. This won't always be a great solution method and um, you know, your mileage may vary. Uh, let me show you what it looks like here by drawing the triangle that represents the sum of these two vectors. Let's see here, I've got uh, vector W should be in like this lighter blue. Let's see if we can do that. Oh, y'all, I don't have a crazy light blue here. Let's see if we can find something. That'll work. All right, vector W. That's what I get for picking this light blue ink, y'all. All right, uh, vector P and vector W are drawn. I now want to move them down here to show you what law of cosines looks like. I love that I can get you a scaled drawing um, off of the picture. Now, let's see here. I think I should probably have connected P plus W from the original picture. This will work. Okay. P plus W plane. Where's that crazy light blue I had a minute ago? Here's my law of cosines. This one requires a little bit of some algebraic work that um, I want to look into the angles here. First of all, based on that drawing that I just zoomed away from, this is a 50 degree angle. I want to know if that 50 degree angle appears in whole or in part anywhere inside my triangle. So I'm going to translate that vertical line that it's measured from up here and realize that following the blue line up, this 50 degree angle, this angle it shows up here. How do I know that? I know that because parallel lines cut by a transversal um, cause all sorts of congruent angles going on. So that is a 50 degree angle. And let's look really closely at where the wind comes in, the wind and the gray angle, the wind and the gray right here. Doop, doop. That is totally a 90 degree angle. 
Yeah, so, ooh, this is nice. To do law of cosines, I need to know one angle inside the triangle. So I'm going to get rid of, oh, hello, go away. Come back. Let's get rid of this guy. We don't need that. That is not inside my triangle. Now I'm going to go up here. 50 plus 90, 140 degrees. I'm going to relabel this. Get rid of this guy. I don't need these guys. 140. That angle between the two different shades of blue. I also know this is 480. I know 50. Not even a color match. You're just going to go with me on this. All right, I have 480 on one side, 50 on the other side, and 140 degrees as the included angle. Y'all, I am looking at givens are side angle side type info. Oh, this is fantastic news. I know how to work with that. I'm going to label the three sides because I am never going to keep law signs straight here. Let's call this side B, call this side A, call this side C. Oh, those choice totally arbitrary. I just want to be able to use the law signs and keep everything straight. So I'm going to go ahead and solve that out. And I'm going to get that A is approximately equal to 519 miles per hour. Start a problem. So we'll go back to this. Step one, solve for P plus W. Magnitude. Step two, use law of cosines to find uh, angle C. I need it to end with cosine C. All right, let's go for it. We're going to be solving for angle C here. Angle C measures, well, approximately 3.6 degrees. So um, that means the angle um, theta for P plus W is, what did we say before? That was going to be 50 degrees plus this 3.6, or about 53.6 degrees, uh, which we were told to round it to the nearest whole number. Let's call it 54 degrees. Method two, law of cosines, and method one, using vector components shown here side by side, 